So the both port objective of what we were trying to do here was to use uh, clever API interfacing on the GitHub code base to try and compare well-tested code and badly tested code to try and get a handle on the quality of the legacy code base. Uh, we thought this was going to be pretty novel and pretty cool. Uh, I still stand by that, but as you're going to see, we had some technical difficulties. Uh, this was largely because we were kind of out there on our own, learning new skills. Uh, what the actual work plan we ended up with was we spent quite a long time together trying to work out what we could achieve based on what we can pull out of the API. Uh, and then we split at the end where Chris did some sterling work on actually getting the API working and I attempted to weave what came out of it into a story. Uh, it's all reproducible. Our code's on GitHub at my uh, thing. I'll show you that in a minute. But with no further ado, I will hand over to Chris to show you some stuff. Yep. OK, so we started off trying to do all of this in Python, and we were having some difficulties doing that. And then we both realized that we'd attended the same workshop yesterday on using GraphQL, and we thought that that might be a good thing to try. Um, so we were using this very handy website here to basically test out different queries we could send to the GitHub API. So for example, here I am searching for repositories that have any mention of the word physics in it. We thought that might be give us a good idea of uh, a sort of broad base of uh, research code on, on GitHub. And in fact, there are something like 28,960 um, physics-based repositories on there. And in fact, as we were doing this, an extra four were added. Um, so this is great. This allowed us to test out these queries very quickly. So if I hit play, you can see that on the left-hand side there, I get a big list. So there's the, all the repositories that mention physics. And here are some details about the first 10 of them. So you can see the name of this one. You can see the date it was created, the date it was pushed. You can see the number of commits. And we just thought we would uh, try and analyze this data and see if we could use that to uh, work out a little bit about the, uh, whether the, the people who were uploading these were following best practice. And we thought it might be interesting to see if we could quantify this for um, the research code base as a whole and across different disciplines. So I'm just going to switch to terminal window now. Uh, Okay, so this is just running um, the code we wrote around that query in Python to analyze the results. So ahead of time, I gathered some of the physics repositories and I can just do a bit of analysis on those. So here, just to give you some idea of what we might be able to do when we have a bit more time to work on this. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have the name of the repository upload. Um, here we have the time that's elapsed between the creation of the repository and the last push. So that gives you some idea of you know, the active development time that's been going on. And you can see that for some of these, it's an incredibly long time. So you know, 2,191 days in this case. Um, here we have the number of commits that have been made in that time. And just uh, to give an initial figure of merits, this is the number of commits divided by the number of days. So it, it tells you the number of commits that have been made per day. And obviously if that's very high, then there's a lot of very active development going on. And you can see here, we've got a, a real mix. So Physics is actually not too bad. We have quite a few that are over one. Um, this one is very big. So we, we're having like 47 commits a day here. Um, I can have a little look at biology. So we've got a few more here. There were biology repositories, by the way, something about 4,000 on there. Um, and you can see that, again, we have some that are quite low and we've got some that are quite large. So this just gives you some idea of the numbers we could start to pull out. And uh, the idea would be to crawl through more and try and do some better analysis on that. So I'm going to hand back over to Dan now and he can show you some okay. other things we tried. And very quickly. Uh, so once we had that working, which took a while, we then attempted to get that same interface to spit out the commit to text sent onto the commit and then to work with that in Python, essentially using regular expressions on it to try and pull out the buggy, the bug related commits. This turned out to be an absolute nightmare and I would point you to this delightful uh, XKCD comic indicating the trouble with this. Eventually though, we did kind of get it working, but you, as you will see now, uh, this hasn't been a complete unalloyed success. I will show you what happens if we run 
this code. So here's the part where I try and regex it and I do some tests because that was important because it was crashing. And here then is a little loop that just tries to get at the changes I have through to stop time. You now. <laughs> it didn't work very well, is the punchline. <laughs> Can we give um, Dan and Chris a round of applause? <laughs>